Good evening, everyone, and good morning to some of you. Good afternoon. Welcome to this webinar, this expert forum, Importance of Digital Inclusion for People with Disabilities. Uh, we would like to share with you some ground rules before starting the session. So we would like to let you know that this meeting is being recorded and it will be made available to all public. Auto-translated captions are available too. To enable them, please click show captions in the meeting controls toolbar. International Sign Language Interpretation is available. Pin the video of the interpreter by right-clicking on it as a suggestion. I would like to remind to our panelists that uh, please keep your microphones muted unless you are speaking. And if you would like to ask panelists a questions, we kindly ask you to use the Q&A section in the menu, not the chat. Feel free to use the text chat if there's any technical issues or general comments. And there will be a, a Q&A session uh, at the end of the presentations. And if there are any questions left or any comments you would like to share after the meeting, please send them to info at smartcitiesforall.org. Okay. Um, we will be sharing this email address later in the chat so you can send you your comments or questions. So with this uh, share, I would like I have the pleasure to introduce to you our panelists today. So we have Mr. Bashkar Batasharji, his national consultant, uh, accessibility consultant as part, to part of the accessibility as part to innovate program. We have also today with us, Mr. Anir Chaudhry, he's a policy advisor uh, from the A2I ICT division and from the cabinet division government of Bangladesh. We have also the pleasure to have with us, Dr. Muhammad Humayun Kabir, He's a project director uh, of Aspire to Innovate A2I program. We also have today uh, Monica Duem. Uh, she's the director of the Global Advisory Center for G3ICT. And we have also Dr. Mohamed Lofty, director for capacity building at advocacy at G3ICT. And my name is Lourdes Arreola, and I will be uh, coordinating um, this um, webinar. So with this, I will uh, give the, uh, <clears throat> this, um, the micro to Dr. Muhammad Humayun Kabir. He will uh, share with us some insights about Bangladesh. So please, Dr. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Lourdes Arreola. Thank you for giving me the floor. Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, good day, everyone, and Assalamu Alaikum. Distinguished panelists, uh, Our Excellency Monica Duhem, Director, Global Accessibility Center of uh, G3 ICT. His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Ali Lofti, Director for Capacity Building and Advocacy of G3 ICT. Mr. Ani Choudhury, Policy Advisor A2I, and Mr. Bhaskar Bhatt Bhattacharjia, National Consultant Accessibility of A2I. Uh, thank you each and everyone, uh, everyone of you for being here with us for any very important uh, uh, workshops or uh, programs. We are extremely pleased to be able to welcome those, those of you that have been with us for a long time, now as well as those who are newly connected with this journey for the disability. And before I uh, Proceed further, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge and express our gratitude to the organizer, including G3ICT, for their commendable efforts in organizing this uh, insightful webinar on the importance of digital inclusion for the people with disability to celebrate Global Accessibility Awareness Day uh, 2023. Uh, G3ICT, as a global uh, leader, in promoting digital accessibility and inclusive ICT practices has been instrumental in raising awareness and advocating for the rights of the individual with disability worldwide. And thank you for that. Over the years, Bangladesh has made significant progress in harnessing the power of technology to ensure digital accessibility and empowering citizens. The journey towards digital accessibility began in 2008 when the 
our government outlined its vision of digital Bangladesh by 2021 in its election manifesto. The availability of e-government services has also experienced a substantial growth, uh, reaching 60.5 million in 2022. Uh, one of the notable achievements in the pursuit of digital accessibility in this establishment of various initiatives to benefit citizens with disability, the multimedia talking book initiatives, accessible dictionary and digital classrooms and labs in education institute have paved the way for inclusive education. The government has also, uh, also digitized the educational content, enabling students to access textbook, exam, exam result, and job application online. Our outstanding initiatives, the multimedia talking book has greatly contributed to ensuring accessibility in education for students with disability by converting 107 textbooks into full text and full audio multimedia talking books. Students, including those with the visual impairments, have gained access to the free education materials. The National Curriculum Textbook Board have embraced this initiative, producing and distributing multimedia talking books since 2023. As a result, over 1 million students with the disability and without disability have benefited to achieve higher pass rates and even securing the top grades. Bangladesh's largest e-learning platform, Muktopat, offers free courses on various subjects, allowing individuals to learn at their own pace. Efforts have been made to make it accessible to the people with the disability with features like a monochrome display, inverted colors, big cursors, highlighted links, and screen reader options. A panel of accessibility auditors, including the person with disabilities, ensures government uh, websites and online services are suitable for the everyone, including disabled. In, uh, in terms of digital accessibility for visual disability, the government has developed the accessibility dictionary. The dictionary available in Bangla to English, English to Bangla, and Bengali, uh, Bengali to Bengali version. It can be used through the computers, mobile phones, and other media benefiting both the visually impaired individual and the largely illiterate population of Bangladesh. The accessible dictionary reduces the cost of printing the dictionaries and providing a valuable resources for the uh, language uh, comprehensions. Moreover, the government has organized disability and digital inclusion training uh, to sensitize the individual and organization about the disability related issues, promote inclusiveness in the digital age. By raising awareness and fostering understanding, the government aims to dismantle barriers and ensure equal rights for all citizens. We have strongly believed that Bangladesh government took significant steps to make digital service accessible to the people with disability, yet much to go, we believe. Recognizing the importance of ensuring the rights and protection of persons uh, with disability, Bangladesh signed the uh, United Nations Convention on the Ri uh, Rights of Persons with Disabilities, that is UNCRPD, in 2007 and enacted the Rights and Protection of Persons with Disability Act 2013 in Bangladesh. To ensure accessibility in digital services, digital service and web designing guidelines for inclusive accessibility 2022 has been developed in compliance with the international standard of WCAG 2.1 guidelines. The Disability Innovation Lab under the A2A programs has played a very crucial role in providing technical advices and uh, conducting accessibility assessment. Website developed by the A2I have achieved the average accessibility rate. Looking forward, the vision of an inclusive smart Bangladesh is one of our very important agenda for the uh, uh, coming days. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a feature where the digital services are designed with accessibility in mind, making them easy to use for all individuals and inclusive smart Bangladesh, leveraging technology to empower people with disabilities, providing them with the equal opportunity for education, employment, and particip participation in the society as a whole. Uh, through continu uh, continued collaboration between the government agency, person with disability, and various stakeholders, Bangladesh can create an ecosystem of innovation and inclusivity, leading to the way toward the better, brighter, and the more uh, equitable futures. 
only by working together, government, UN entities, civil society, including also the organization of persons with disabilities, private sectors, communities of the expert, we can effectively implement the convention of the right of persons with disability and tackle the obstacle, the injustice and the discrimination that person with the disability experiences. Realizing the rights of person with the disability is crucial to fulfilling the core promises of 2030 agenda that is leaving no one behind. In all our actions, our goal is very clear. A world in which all the person can enjoy equal opportunity, participate in decision making and truly benefit from economic, social, political and cultural life. Uh, that's the goal uh, worth fighting for. And I thank you again for giving me the opportunity to speak before you. Thank you so much. Thank, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Humayun. Really nice uh, and great uh, for uh, learning about these digital accessibility initiatives in Bangladesh. Now I will leave the microphone to Dr. Mohamed Lofty, okay. Director okay. for Capacity Building and Advocacy at G3 ICT. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Salam alaikum. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here uh, today uh, to address issues Welcome. of digital accessibility for persons with disabilities in, in Bangladesh you. and also uh, on the uh, global level. Sure. Um, I joined G3ICT two years ago, coming from the disability advocacy movement. And uh, one of the uh, things that inspired me to be part of this organization is, as, is its commitment to promoting the disposition of the rights of, of, this, of the language on digital accessibility addressed by the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, particularly uh, Article, Article 9. Um, uh, G, G3ICT uh, uh, is, a, is an organization that runs different programs that help enhancing opportunities of, dis of digital inclusion of persons with disabilities on all levels, uh, working with governments, organizations of persons with disabilities, and all stakeholders involved in uh, digital accessibility or inclusive ICTs. Uh, some of the programs I will address here, and um, first we will, we, I will, um, the, uh, the policy development where uh, the organization engages with issues of uh, standards and, uh, and procurement, uh, and I will leave this to Dr. Monica to talk about this later, uh, working with governments and, uh, um, and, and, and United Nations agencies on developing these tools. The second program is uh, benchmarking the implementation of the CRPD by government, according to the government commitments by governments to the CRPD uh, through the, uh, the program, the institutional relations and advocacy department at G3 ICT working also on promoting knowledge sharing and capacity building on, on uh, this digital ad accessibility advocacy for persons with disabilities through this department. The organization also fosters innovation on, uh, on techno uh, technology and uh, digital accessibility through its flagship initiate uh, events every year at the Enabling Summit that is held uh, every October this year. It's going to be in, D and in Washington DC, of course, this year it's going to be on October 10th to 12th, 2023 in Washington, DC. And the last program I would like to address is the uh, training and uh, certification program uh, under the International Association for Accessibility Professionals, one of the major arms of G3 ICT promoting knowledge sharing uh, and, and, and technical resources or professional resources for uh, people interested in uh, uh, digital accessibility. Um, one of the um, major tools that G3ICT have started in 2018 is the Digital Accessibility Right Evaluation Index. It's an index that benchmarks and traces the commitment of gov governments to the uh, principles on, of digital accessibility according to the disposition of the CRPD, uh, again, particularly Article 9 and other uh, obliga obligation principles uh, in the convention. Uh, the uh, uh, th this is a, a, a tool that has been uh, uh, un undertaken in collaboration with organizations of persons with disabilities 
and mainly targeting the enhancement of knowledge of uh, digital accessibility advocates um, uh, on issues of digital accessibility. Uh, the Dare Index is an is a tool that's been that was implemented <clears throat> uh, in collaboration with Disabled Peoples International and its national assemblies, also with the European Union and uh, other organizations in countries where uh, D DPI does not have representation. Uh, in terms of structure, uh, the uh, global the Dare Index is uh, structured according to the uh, reporting uh, uh, mechanism, human rights reporting mechanism, according to the United, United Nations Development Program, uh, UNT, UNDP monitoring the level of the level of structure, process, and outcomes uh, on human rights. And uh, in 2020, uh, their index included additional questions comparing to their index 2018. Uh, particularly uh, addressing uh, commitment of governments of the implementation of the Marrakesh Treaty on uh, rights of persons with reading disabilities um, uh, under the uh, 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 on, under the component of uh, government commitments, um, uh, ad ad adopting or launching uh, ICT uh, accessi ICT accessibility councils by governments under under the gov uh, government uh, government capacity implementation on digital accessibility and third last but not least uh having access to internet uh by persons with disabilities under uh outcomes um uh, the uh of course, it's not easy to compare between 2022 and 2018 and their, their index results because of this additional uh, these additional questions. Unless we want to, unless we want to uh, just focus on the common uh, questions. Their index in 2020 uh, covered 90% uh, of world population in 137 countries out of 825 countries have, that have ratified the Convention on the Rights um, of Persons uh, with Disabilities. Uh, their index has three legs or components, as I said. The first component is on implementation, uh, uh, on country commitments. The second is on capacity of implementation. And the third is on uh, outcomes of programs um, based on a number of variables, including internet, education, employment, uh, uh, public procurement, independent living, smart cities, uh, ebooks, TV and radio, and websites. Now, if we want to talk particularly about Bangladesh, Bangladesh, according to their index, ranked uh, nine, uh, uh, 93 uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the level of implementation of digital accessibility. It ranked 20, it, it scored 22.5%, and it ranked 108 uh, among, uh, uh, like on the global level in terms of, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, 28 among uh, peer develop, economic development countries, and uh, again, 93%, 93 in terms of implementation. Um, if we want to talk about the uh, achievements and gaps uh, based on the, their index structure, Bangladesh uh, has ratified the CRPD uh, on uh, November 30th, 20, uh, 2007, uh, and also adopted a law on the rights of persons with disabilities in compliance, in compliance with the CRPD. However, it still uh, it, re it remains to it, it needs to uh, um, adopt the, the uh, Marrakesh Treaty and also needs to uh, create, uh, uh, have definitions on, uh, it also has definition on uh, reasonable accommodation, but it needs to uh, develop some definition on ICT accessibility and also make sure that disability is included in its uh, uh, universal uh, service obligation program in terms of for, to, to, to promote uh, digital accessibility. In terms of uh, uh, country implementation capacity, the country uh, has only uh, created a council of persons with disabilities, 
but it still uh, needs to make sure that there is a process of engaging persons with disabilities in decision making process regarding digital accessibility and also needs to uh, make sure that uh, the country complies with standards of digital global or international standards of uh, digital accessibility. Um, and uh, last but not least, they are the country uh, we need, I mean, there, there is some work, uh, much more work that need to be done in terms of uh, in making sure that uh, digital accessibility is, uh, is included in uh, universities and uh, vocational, vocational training uh, programs in the country. Now, um, as I said, Digital X, the DARE Index is uh, promoted, is, is created to also enhance efforts of advocacy. And um, I know Dr. Monica is going to talk about tools that g 3 have created to uh, enhance advocacy efforts, uh, but uh, allow me to just address one uh, tool that I am responsible for, which is the Digital Accessibility Right Education Academy. It's an academy that was uh, started to uh, ensure that uh, authentic representations of versus, uh, representation of voices of persons with disabilities are included in G3 ICT efforts uh, and making sure that no one is left behind on the uh, sustainable development level, uh, particularly in terms of technology and uh, digital inclusion. Um, the academy is, uh, uh, is an educational uh, uh, program by G3 ICT that aims at uh, making sure that uh, persons with disabilities um, uh, are involved uh, in, in advocacy. Um, it has uh, uh, the goal of uh, promoting knowledge sharing and capacity building for persons with disabilities in the field of digital accessibility, uh, making sure that there are efforts, that, that mutual efforts of advocacy on global and multilateral levels are enhanced among persons with disabilities and their organizations, and also to make sure that uh, there are uh, in a, there are uh, global uh, uh, capacity building and knowledge sharing uh, uh, and ex exchange of knowledge or expertise among advocates with disabilities in the field of digital accessibility. Um, um, Dare Index has uh, three programs. A scholarship program, a scholarship, pro a scholarship program, dedicated for uh, persons with disabilities who are passionate and enthusiastic about uh, digital accessibility advocacy. So uh, candidates must be advocates with disabilities, and also uh, it's an opportunity for them to receive a, a professional certification in the field of digital accessibility. Um, it's also the Dare Index has a webinar series program that hopefully will be launched this fall after the uh, finalization of uh, G3 ICT uh, knowledge resource on digital accessibility. It's a kind of a toolkit, uh, an online toolkit on digital accessibility. But it's mainly this webinar. The, the webinar series is to document best practices on uh, digital accessibility and allow. Uh, uh, you know, in, Good source, good re, good source of uh, knowledge uh, on digital accessibility for advocates with disabilities. The last program is the fellowship program. It's a program of um, uh, that is open for uh, advocates uh, advocates with disabilities, particularly graduates of uh, their academic scholarship program, to work together on uh, enhancing each other's efforts on uh, accessible on advocacy in the field of digital accessibility in their countries. Um, Dare Index is run by uh, our is, is run under the institutional uh, orient, uh, relations and advocacy department of G3ICT, and it's uh, uh, run under the supervision of an advisory board that consists of representatives of disability organ organizations of persons, international organizations of persons with disabilities, and organizations that uh, work in the field of disability and develop and development, uh, including. CBM Global, International Disability Alliance, Disabled People International, World Federation of the Deaf, International Network of Hard of Hearing, European Network of Hard of Hearing, um, uh, Leonard Cheshire Institute, uh, and DAISY Consortium. Um, and uh, the, the role of the advisory board is to help promoting uh, the DARE Index Scholarship Program and recruit um, uh, candidates, also to help uh, 
you know, reviewing uh, policies and programs on digital accessibility for advocacy purposes and also help the index, the, 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 sorry, the academy to raise funds for its programs. And last, last but not least is to work with G3 ICT and, uh, to make sure that, organiza that organizations of persons with disabilities are well involved in digital accessibility uh, advocacy. Uh, if you, I mean, of course, at the end, uh, if you need any, if you have any questions, inquiries, or have any feedback regarding the index, um, it, please reach index at g3ict.org or about the DARE Academy, DARE Academy at g3ict.org. I will conclude by letting you know that uh, the new edition of uh, G of uh, G3 ICT DARE Index hopefully will be launched at the end of this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Lotzi. Very interesting about this uh, di digital inclusion perspective. And now I will uh, leave the microphone to uh, Bhaskar Bhattacharji uh, to talk about, oh, talk to about digital inclusion from a Bangladesh perspective. <clears throat> Thank you, moderator. Um, welcome, everybody, distinguished panelists, um, especially uh, our respected PD, sir. Uh, he's uh, uh, one of the most senior um, um, officials of the Bangladesh government. He's here. And um, and also my um, respected Ani Choudhury, uh, who is a renowned um, speaker globally. Uh, he's very renowned for uh, digital um, 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 ICT for development and um, and also he's the he's the key visionary one of the key visionary to making digital Bangladesh uh, in a reality and my colleagues from GTICT uh, Mohammed and Monica um, and all other colleagues um, my name is Bhaskar Bhattacharjee I'm serving as a national consultant accessibility with the A2I program and also I'm serving as a country representative for G3ICT in Bangladesh um, we are very pleased to um, collaborate with G3ICT to celebrate the Global Accessibility Awareness Day. As you know, um, 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 the world is progressing rapidly in the digitalizations. Even two decades ago, um, um, we uh, sometime talked about the accessibility and we understand that means it is an accessibility of infrastructural accessibility. Um, globally, it was uh, recognized um, hundreds of thousands of uh, digital service was not accessible for people with disabilities. It was nearly impossible for the people with disabilities, which are around 1 billion in the world, to access different digital services. To ensure digital inclusions and rights of, promote rights of persons with disabilities in the digital space, last 12 years, we are celebrating Global Accessibility Awareness Day in all over the world. Since 2022, um, A2I is leading the uh, celebration of Global Accessibility Awareness Day in Bangladesh um, uh, on behalf of Bangladesh government by engaging Ministry of Social Welfare, um, Ministry of ICT and ICT Division and other relevant ministries. And we're, um, it was the one of the key um, driver to ensure accessibility and inclusion in Bangladesh. I was very attentively listening to uh, uh, um, Mohammed's presentation, especially about the um, DARE index. Uh, my dear friend, by the last two years, we progress a lot. Um, I can give, I would like to share some of the um, um, feedback based on your uh, presentation. Firstly, Bangladesh just um, deposited its accession of Marrakesh Treaty as a, f as a 116 country last year in September, as um, 26 September, we have um, deposited our accession to the WIPO. So we are now the state party of the Marrakesh Treaty, Marrakesh VIP Treaty. Secondly, Bangladesh have achieved and ensured accessible reading materials for all children with disabilities by providing accessible books, including DAISY multimedia talking book, accessible ebook, and braille book. The students with disabilities are getting freely in the, uh, from in the beginning of the years. The third is that we just recently adopted a national guideline to ensure web accessibility based on WCAG 
in this guideline, we have a definition of the uh, uh, digital uh, accessibility. And also, you'll be very pleased to know our law, Persons with Disability Rights and Protection Act 2013, have a separate section on digital inclusion and accessibility. In that section, it was defined what we mean the, um, it means about the digital accessibility and inclusions. So um, that's also a very progressive law we have adopted in line with UN Convention of Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And I believe um, DR index score will be increased a lot if you run a, um, a, a study now. So the progress is really remarkable. Um, we are trying to achieve WCAG 2.0 A level or in all of our digital services, including national portal, that is almost 33,000 websites are connected. MyGov, 1,000 plus digital services are there. NICE portal, that is a skills portal for the, um, the young people. Muktopat is an open e-learning platform, almost 300 plus e-learning courses are there. And also National Helpline 333. That would be one of the most inclusive and accessible helpline. We are going to launch it very soon because uh, already people can get information by calling, but we are trying to, and we, are, we are going to ensure sign language interpretation and also SMS-based communication for the helpline. Um, I am just skipping my presentation uh, before going further discussions, um, I would like to stress three of the commitment of Bangladesh government. One, that is a political commitment. The manifesto of the current government has remarkably um, um, included digital inclusion and accessibility issues. Um, so um, uh, politically, this government are committed to promote the rights of persons with disabilities. Number two, the legal commitment. Our respected PDs are also at risk, and I am sure um, our Anish Choudhury also will discuss about that. We are legally committed. We have adopted, Bangladesh government has adopted a Persons with Disability Rights and Protection Act, Neuro Neurodevelopment Trust Act. As you know, Neuro Neurodevelopment Disability is one of the most vulnerable community among the people with disabilities to ensure their rights. Bangladesh has just adopted the Neuro Development Trust Act. And also um, many of the government policies, including education policies, ICT policies, Disaster Management Act has a separate section on disability inclusion. So this is really remarkable commitment by the uh, government. The third commitment, which is the international or global commitment. Our government is the first 20 country who have ratified the UN Convention of Rights, Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And Article 9 and Article 21 has a, um, a, a commitment towards digital inclusion and accessibility and right to information. And also, um, as a one hand, I already told you, as a 116 country, we have um, 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 uh, do the accession of the Marrakesh Treaty. So that's really, uh, and, and recently we have, um, um, Re revise our law that's already drafted um, uh, based on the Madagascar City copyright law is already um, the, um, uh, re re um, the revised and, and, and drafted and now is waiting for the approval by the parliament and copyright exception, copyright exception has uh, included in the copyright law of the uh, Bangladesh. So we are expecting uh, very soon this copyright law will be passed from the parliament. And so by these three commitment, political commitment, legal commitment, and global commitment, we come to a um, 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 point that we are really addressing the rights of persons with disabilities in a proper manner. As there is a global, um, uh, globally there is a um, uh, campaign, we say nothing about us without us. And I'm serving as a national consultant accessibility with the A2I program, which is originally originated from the Prime Minister Office of Bangladesh in 2008. And I'm one of the persons with disabilities who is leading the process. And number of persons with disabilities are working with me as a digital accessibility auditors, as a um, as a advocate, and and as a promoter of the digital inclusion 
program. We are just working with a number of OPDs. They are our partner. We organize the this year also we organize three more events for celebrating Global Accessibility Awareness Days. Persons with Disabilities and their organization was highly involved in this celebration. Um, I would like to request organizer, uh, moderator, if you allow me to play a video. Bella, if you um, just play the video, uh, which, which you can get some of the ideas of our work, um, uh, what we are uh, progressing, how we are progressing towards digital inclusion. Could you please play the video or I, if you allow me, I can share the screen or Bella, if you kindly, kindly um, play the video then uh, other. And this video, I think um, accessible as there is a subtitle is there. So our colleagues who are unable to um, um, listen and they can see the text. Um, uh, could you please, uh, moderator, could you kindly please let me know? Should I share or? Uh, uh, the, the video is being shared now, Bashkar. Okay, so, just, uh, yeah. Could you please play it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Ten percent of the population of Bangladesh, or an estimated 16 million people, live their lives with disability in Bangladesh. Many reasons, including environmental pollution, natural disasters, genetic structure, and insufficiency of nutrition, can cause disabilities like visual, hearing, motor, and cognitive disabilities. People with disability face biases and barriers from society, which not only causes them suffering, but also stunt the development of our country. To reach her full potential, Bangladesh needs to offer accessibility to basic services for people with disability or impairments. In today's Digital Bangladesh, introducing digital service accessibility can be the perfect solution in helping them access websites, apps and digital services as effectively as a person without any disability. Under the visionary leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, every sector of Bangladesh is rapidly adopting digital service accessibility. Muktopat, Emporia website of BCC and BD Jobs are fully accessible today. 33,000 government portals up to union level will be accessible by this year. Besides this, 10,000 private public websites and digital services need to be accessible. Striving to become a developed and prosperous nation, aligning with the SDG commitment, the government of Bangladesh is working relentlessly to offer equal access and equal opportunity to people with diverse abilities. Thank you very much for listening. Hope uh, if there is time, we can answer any of your questions. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Bashkar. And um, yes, I would like to take just one minute to remind you, if you have any questions for the speakers, please share it through the Q&A section and uh, write the name of the speakers you would like to ask your question. Thank you. So next, I would like to introduce Mr. Anir Chaudhry. He's the policy advisor of A2I program of the ICT division. Uh, please, Mr. Chaudhry, uh, the microphone is yours. Thank you very much, uh, moderator, uh, distinguished speakers, panelists, and participants. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are around the globe. Uh, today, on the occasion of Global Accessibility Awareness Day 2023, I'm delighted to address this international webinar on the importance of digital inclusion for people with disabilities. <clears throat> I'd like to express my heartfelt appreciation to the organizers, namely the Global Initiative for the Inclusive ICTs, Smart Cities for All, and the International Association of Accessibility Professionals. 
Uh, without your invaluable support, this webinar on the importance of digital inclusion for people with disabilities would not have been possible. So my deepest congratulations as well. I firmly believe that this event marks the beginning of a fruitful and long-standing collaboration as we embark on a journey of working together to create a more inclusive future. Let me say a little bit about it why, uh, as you heard from uh, Dr. Humayun Kabir, the Aspire to Innovate program, which started at the Prime Minister's office about 16 years ago, and now uh, housed in the ICT division and cabinet division uh, that spans the entire government of Bangladesh and is supported by UNDP. It's a flagship special program of the government of Bangladesh uh, to establish uh, what was called Digital Bangladesh by 2021. And now we have a new target set by the prime minister called Smart Bangladesh uh, to become a high income country by 2041 uh, and an equitable society. And obviously equitability uh, involves uh, being inclusive in all, all spheres. And also the target uh, on the way to becoming a high income country by 2041 is to achieve the SDGs, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Article 15D of the Constitution of Bangladesh established the Disability Allowance Program in the 2005-06 fiscal year, initially providing an allowance of 200 taka per month to exactly 104,166 citizens with disability. In the current fiscal year, if you just uh, compare, in the current fiscal year of 2022-23, the program's beneficiaries have risen from 2 million to 2.3 million, accompanied by increase in the monthly allowance from uh, 750 taka to 850 taka. Meanwhile, the Department of Social Services has identified and registered more than 3 million persons with disabilities in their disability information management system. In line with international conventions, such as the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, the government of Bangladesh has made commendable progress, and you've heard some of that uh, through the presentation that Bhaskar has just made uh, in recognizing and supporting persons with disabilities. The Department of Social Services has identified and registered, as I mentioned, 3 million individuals. Uh, we have also implemented the Rights and Protection of Persons with Disabilities Act 2013 to ensure the rights and holistic development of persons with disabilities. The recently approved digital services and web designing guidelines for inclusive accessibility 2022 by the ICT division sets the stage for inclusive digital services across the nation. We acknowledge the significant strides made by Bangladesh in promoting in inclusive digital practices. The inclusive Smart Bangladesh Initiative Vision 2041 is a testament to our commitment to building a society where every individual, including those with disabilities, can practice actively in the digital revolution. Uh, this visionary initiative envisions a future where digital services prioritize universal design, making them accessible to all citizens, including those with disabilities, by targeting the development of accessible digital services and materials such as e-learning content. We aim to ensure that no one is left behind in the digital realm. <laughs> As part of A2I services for inclusive citizenship, we have taken concrete steps to bridge the digital divide for people with disabilities. And in this regard, we established a disability innovation lab, which we call DIL, which focuses on five areas. Building digital innovations for persons with disabilities, conducting audits on national digital platforms, developing capacity among service providers to make their digital platforms accessible, supporting formulations of appropriate policies, laws, and standards. And fifth, continuously working on policy advocacy with policymakers and government officials at all levels, from the ministries down to the field level officials. Uh, Bhaskar has talked about a few examples, uh, such as the Bangladesh National Portal, which brings together over 50,000 offices. So that's all offices from the ministries down to the level of uh, rural local government institutions at the village level. So this national portal brings together all these offices under one umbrella, bangladesh.gov.bd, and it follows accessibility standards, setting an example as the world's largest accessible portal. MyGov, which also Bhaskar talked about, is a virtual one-stop shop for over 1,700 government offices from um, over uh, 100 government organizations, and that is actually implementing the disability standards. Muktopat, the largest e-learning platform in Bangladesh, which has reached over to uh, over 2 million adult learners, 
It also offers accessible educational resources benefiting students with disabilities across the nation. Uh, in the banking industry to ensure digital financial inclusion, ETUA has taken uh, very diligently you know, several steps to make digital financial services accessible to all. Initially, five banks have taken steps to implement accessibility through comprehensive assessments by both public and private banks. We aim to promote accessibility in the banking sector. By addressing these barriers and ensuring inclusive financial services, we strive to provide equal opportunities for financial participation to all citizens. ETWA also supported the development of the concept of inclusive university campus. Many innovators from around the country contributed to this concept. In the upcoming innovation competition for smart campus, disability inclusion will be a cornerstone of the design. These initiatives reflect our dedication to creating an inclusive digital landscape where citizens with disabilities can access vital information and services effortlessly. ATY is replicating the best practices in different countries through South-South collaboration by being the secretariat for South-South Network for Public Service Innovation. This network has uh, brought together about 60 countries and international organizations who share and replicate one another's digital innovations. And accessibility is also a, uh, an initiative in this network. ATUI is currently looking to establish an equality center, E-quality center, for inclusive innovation, which will house the Disability Innovation Lab. The establishment of this center under the ATUI program further demonstrates our commitment to equality and inclusivity. Recognizing the international context, we align our efforts with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, particularly SDG 4, 8, 10, 11, and 17, which prioritize equal participation and rights for persons with disabilities. By collaborating with various stakeholders, including government bodies, civil society organizations, and private enterprises, we aim to uh, drive forward accessible digital services and policies. Our focus on empathy, awareness, and sensitization helps foster an environment that respects the rights and needs of individuals with disabilities. Let me conclude by emphasizing that digital inclusion for people with disabilities is not just a goal, it is a necessity. Through the Inclusive Smart Bangladesh Initiative Vision 2041, ATUI services for inclusive citizenship and the establishment of the Equality Center, we are steadfast in our commitment to building an inclusive digital society. Let us continue our collaboration, collective efforts to remove barriers, promote equal opportunities, and empower individuals with disabilities to fully participate and contribute to the digital world. Uh, thank you to ATUI's Disability Innovation Lab once again, and also express my heartfelt appreciation to G3ICT for organizing this enlightening webinar and for your continuous effort in championing digital inclusion for people with disabilities. ATUI's DIL is highly interested to collaborate with the international communities, including G3ICT, I believe our commitment to this cause will undoubtedly create a positive and lasting impact on the lives of individuals with disabilities globally. Thank you all and let us strive for an inclusive future where no one is left behind. Thank you, Lourdes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shodri. Very interesting the steps taken by the government of Bangladesh for digital inclusion. Thank you for sharing that with us. And now I will leave the microphone to Dr. Monica Du, and she's our director of uh, the um, advisory center. And uh, she's gonna share with us very interesting projects and tools that G3ICT has created. Dr. Duen, please. Thank you, Lourdes, and, and good evening and good morning for everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here with you. First of all, uh, two things for, from what the good experience we've just heard. One is congratulations. And two is it's important to share, to share best practices with, with other countries, with other countries in the region, so we can really scale all the good works that, that you are doing. So uh, in my part of the presentation, I wanted to, to present a bit all the tools that we at G3ICT in the Global Advocacy Center have available for, for governments, for cities, so you could uh, use those tools and, and really help you not only scale the good work that you're doing, but also to, um, to share with others. 
the the practices that you've been doing. I think that the Disability Building Innovation Lab it's a I think a very interesting project that needs to be looked closely as well as shared. And also, uh, it would be interesting for us to know what are the the follow up and 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 the key measures that you are going to use to really uh, feel the impact and and to measure the return of the investment that you are doing as as it was very clearly said if we include everyone we're not just uh, doing uh, a favor or we're not using these inclusion or or complying with human rights but also we are helping the development of the country in general so i had a couple of slides so you can visually see what are the the services that we provide so if we could put the the couple of slides so you can, as I am discussing them, you can see what are the, the services that we provide in G3ICT. But first of all, we do have available for, for you the Smart Cities Initiative. As you said, and, and I love the idea that you are auditing websites, mostly governments, that you are training in, in these uh, in this skill of, of web accessibility, you already have a standard aligned with international standard, which is great. So in, this, in our Smart Cities Initiative, what we want to help is cities to design the products and services to be accessible for everyone. And this is a very important issue. We need to scale and we need to, to make sure that every department within a city knows their responsibility around digital inclusion. What we've seen around the globe is uh, ICTs doing an effort, ICT ministries doing an effort on inclusion. Of course, the ministries in charge of social development of persons with disabilities are also pushing towards this inclusion. But it's really important that we make sure that every department, now that we're living a digitalization process, every department understands that even if their target audience is not specifically persons with disabilities. It is because we're getting old, because there's persons with disability, as we said, really that have to participate and have the right to participate in absolutely every area of, of the economy and or, or the social or the, so, the society. So it's important that not only and congratulations again of, of all the policies that you have in place and all the resources that you are developing to make sure that we really implement digital inclusion. It's important that now we make sure that it's holistic approach where everybody feels and knows what the responsibility is. So when we're doing this Smart City for All initiative, what we work is exactly with the different cities, with the different departments to to discuss with them if they're doing enough to make sure that every service that they're putting out there for the citizens is included and includes everyone. Of course, this comes aligned with the model policy project with the other UN agency we are developing as we speak model policies so countries can see what the, are those model policies in different areas and can implement them if they do not have model policies. We also help countries that have already have policies, how to implement them. And then again, we are very focused on this holistic approach where everything needs to be embedded uh, with the inclusion of persons with disabilities and also organizations and end users need to be or, organized and need to be a part of, of these efforts. We do offer as well maturity models for, for companies and for universities. And why this is important, because I know that government-wide you're doing great. And I love what, what we just said about the banking industry, about having five banks working with you, the government in this project of making inclusive banking, inclusive financial system. Well, this is important in every aspect of the economy. It's important for every industry because, as I said, to not only it's a human right, but also it's important for companies to understand their role in the inclusion of persons with disability to provide the services that are inclusive. But also, if we enable in accessible environments, they will be able to increase 
the and, and offer jobs for persons with disabilities. So that's why it's so important that we understand in every, again, in every sector, in every industry, that we live this digital transformation. We're using technology everywhere. So it's important that we understand what is accessible technology and how we can really create an impact in the inclusion of this and making this digital environment accessible. Procurement is key because I've heard about all this human, incredible work that you're doing, transforming the website, making them accessible. And, and this is, of course, a need, uh, a really needed action that needs to, to take place. But it's important also that we understand that if we include accessibility from the beginning, if we include accessibility from the procurement stage of any digital project, we make sure that we don't have to go back in, in many years in time and it will be much more cost effective. So we, we work with governments, we work with private companies that are buying or developing technology to make sure that they include these requirements from the beginning. As if I, I do the simil with privacy and with uh, security, they've, all those companies, even in the banking system, in the government, we've already including a process in our procurement to make sure that the technology we're buying is secure. No, the privacy and the security of, of our networks is it's been important for many years. We need to raise accessibility awareness in the same level than privacy and security because it's the same. So that's why another area of we work with governments and cities, the country advisory. But we, you've met you've met one of our, our representative in countries. We do have representative in many countries, so we help together this awareness creation of of the digital rights of persons with disability. Next, please. And uh, their academy. I, I won't go through that. Uh, Dr. Mohamed Lufti already discussed about all our our initiative around creating initiative about the inclusion of persons with disability and as well as the Dairy Index that I'm sure after we, what we've heard today uh, will really benefit uh, Bangladesh in its overall uh, analysis and assessment. Next, please. And finally, uh, the International Association of Accessibility Professionals. As you know, we have, uh, the, well, we are part of this international association and why it is important when we're discussing every aspect of accessibility, the skills that are needed to make sure that we have an accessible website, the skills that are needed to procure accessible technology, they all need to have skills from the professional. So it's important that we have an homogeneous certification around the world. So companies, so governments, so organization of, of and civil society can know for a fact that the professional that I'm hiring, the, the company that I am hiring to help me have inclusive technology does have the necessary knowledge to implement the international standards of accessibility. So that's why it's so important when we're doing such assessments, when we're including in the policies and revising and helping countries to create policies around digital inclusion, we recommend to include certifications to make sure that the knowledge and the understanding of what digital accessibility is, is really the one that is the same for every every country in the world and the same of, of the international standards. Bangladesh, I'm from Mexico. Bangladesh and Mexico were countries that are developing technology. We want to be a, a power in the exports of digital services and, you've, and Bangladesh is doing great in this sense. So we need to make sure that our exports are selling digital services that comply with international standards, but as well as all the technology that we're buying, we need to make sure that those complies with international standards. I, I'm going to stop here. We're passing the hour and I don't know if we have time for questions, but it's a pleasure for me to be here. And we at G3ICT are here to, to help with whatever we can to advance in this journey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Duren. It's really interesting how you 
<clears throat> share with us um, to show us how all correlated topics are required to achieve digital inclusion. And now we're going to be opening uh, for a couple of questions. We know that we are running uh, late, but we would like to answer a couple of questions. So the first questions that we have in the chat is, does this Smart Bangladesh initiative include the inclusion of uh, disabled individuals and organization of people with disabilities? Maybe Mr. Chaudhry, you would like to answer it? Sure, Lourdes, thank you. Yes, Smart Bangladesh initiative absolutely uh, uh, focuses on inclusion of digital initiatives for disabled individuals. Uh, in fact, uh, Smart Bangladesh has a task force uh, it was just formed uh, based on the Digital Bangladesh Task Force that uh, conducted its business for the last uh, over a decade. The task force is chaired by the Honorable Prime Minister. I'm also a member of the task force along with uh, several members of the cabinet and several permanent secretaries. Uh, so uh, inclusion is uh, the cornerstone of, of, uh, of what we discuss in the task force. And inclusion for disabled individuals is also included in that. So the, all the uh, things that I discussed, audits, uh, focus on standards, uh, reformulating policies such as health and education policies, local government policies. So we're trying to embed uh, inclusion for persons with disabilities across the board uh, to, the, to the work of the task force for Smart Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And here's another question that may um, also maybe Bashkar and you can answer. Currently, various types of digital devices are being manufactured in Bangladesh. Has the government adopted any initiatives to ensure the accessibility of these devices? I think uh, it's a mixed bag right now. Uh, so there are some standards, and I think a follow-up question that I also see there is the whether well, there are tax incentives. So I think in the current uh, fiscal year, we have tax incentives for uh, devices like wheelchair. So there are some mentions of that, but uh, much work needs to be done. And perhaps uh, Dr. Humayun Kubir or Bhaskar can can elaborate on on what we need to do. Uh, for uh, standards for devices that are being developed within the country and also that are being imported. Uh, thank you, Mr. Anish Choudhury. Uh, uh, with the uh, permission from the chair, can I? Sure, sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have uh, made a Made in Bangladesh strategy paper. In that paper, this is drafted. This has been ensured that the, all the devices do have the accessibility provisions. So hopefully, the, there is not any divide in the uh, ICT device. So I can assure that of your uh, consumption. Thank, thank you so much, Doctor. And um, I think uh, we still have just one more question. To ask about a couple of questions, uh, is there uh, any government benefits available for the import of assistive technologies that are not currently being produced in Bangladesh? Yeah, there is uh, some provisions uh, for the uh, tax provision uh, debate and other uh, subsidy in producing the uh, devices that will be helpful for the accessibility of the disabled people. Not only disabled, that is people with disability. Yeah. Uh, thank you, because I we believe that it's very important to ensure that uh, all the machines are accessible, right? That are uh, coming from other places. Um, so uh, as a last, would this, you like let, if I may add one thing, the issue of the HS code that was uh, brought up in the Q and A uh, box that I see. I think that is an important area for us to work on. So I just want to thank the person who asked that question. So for any uh, products or goods that we actually import, it's, it falls with some kind of an HS code and any rebate or exemption that is applied to those HS codes. I think there is a lot of work that needs to be done around that. So I, I want to uh, commend the, uh, the, uh, the person who asked the question and we will take that forward. So developing HS codes for uh, assistive technology is important. Thank you. Thank you. And there is one question for you, Dr. Uh, Humayun. Is any specific officer or, or accessibility tester or agency responsible for checking the accessibility of government websites? Yeah, I myself is responsible first. 
because all the government website has been in a single umbrella in Bangladesh, the, the largest website in the whole globe. So as a project director of these uh, projects, so I am solely responsible first. There are some team members who are also second, uh, second tier responsibility. So it's mandatory provisions. We are not only ensuring the accessibility in our websites, but also other websites that is not under the, our control. We are uh, providing their assistance to uh, make sure that the, all the website and the digital uh, services are accessible to the, including the financial inclusions, are accessible to the people with disability. Thank you. Thank you so much. And ten seconds. Besides, there is a dedicated ministry in our country. That's called the uh, Social Welfare Ministry. There's a dedicated department. There are dedicated officials for the ensure all the rights of the uh, people with disability. There's the social welfare ministry. Great, thank you. And just uh, with all this um, vision share about international and local initiatives, do you see a, or would you like to share any opinion about potential collaboration opportunities between G3ICT and the Bangladesh government? And um, how can we, uh, or any, Comments on the digital inclusion and accessibility for the future? If you can allow. Sure, please. Yeah, thank you. The first, there is no standard procedure for international collaboration regarding the device standard, standard operating procedure, and the imported uh, accessories that is helpful for the uh, inclusion of the uh, people with disability. So that we need to work together for standardization of the device, standardization of protocol of the system, and standardization of the collaborations that we can work together from my part also. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank if, you. If, if you if you allow me, I can say just a few recommendations. If uh, you know, I'm serving as the country representative of the GGICT and I same time working with the A2I. Um, we can work immediately for a few issues like um, standardization we already have uh, adopted a guideline and we, you can help us for implementation of the guideline web accessibility guideline we can work for the smart city uh, because uh, it is working for the smart village smart city etc and also we can collaborate for the um, accessible procurement you know if we as we don't have any accessibility procurement policy that's why um, uh, the products which are coming in bangladesh are not fully accessible for people with disabilities and Aniva can add if uh, Mr. Choudhury can add if if because we, we, today's one of the most important um, um, point is uh, that we work uh, organize this webinar. That is, we want to collaborate with GTICT. That is our commitment. Um, uh, Mr. Choudhury can add a few lines here. Ashko, thank you very much. Just two things. I know that we're running out of time. Two things I'd like to add uh, as collaboration with GTICT. One is the the newly proposed e dash quality center the focus really is on inclusiveness inclusion uh it, we're calling it equality center for inclusive innovation it'll be a global center the way we're designing it uh, we have several global partners who have already shown interest and i would like to have a partnership with g3 ict for this center so that's the first thing and the second thing is the south south network for public service innovation uh, which has 60 countries and international organizations within it and a growing membership there as well. Uh, I think that could also benefit from uh, many of the work that many of the works that G3ICT is focusing on so that we can disseminate this uh, to this body of countries and international organizations. So we can talk about that. The coordinator of that network is Asad, our colleague. So we can have a meeting with him and also a uh, meeting with the, the colleagues who are working on the Equality Center. I think I'd just like to propose those two things. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shodri. So I don't know if there's any last comment, Monica and Mohammed, that you would like to share. Just really thank the the government, thank the the participants from the Bangladesh. I think I, I was really mind blowing by all the all the good work that you're doing. So please share with us, share with us those best practices because it's important, and we can help you advocate and create awareness of other countries. You don't need to invent the the wheel. This is part of the wheel, so it's important that we create awareness on what you're doing. And please do, okay. do think of us as a good ally to help you implementation. I think that the, the foundation is there and we can help you really disseminate the good work and create an holistic approach 
uh, for everyone. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you. If I may, uh, Lourdes, just uh, want to congratulate Bangladesh, the government of Bangladesh on the progress it has done on uh, promoting digital accessibility in, in the country. And uh, we definitely look forward to uh, reflecting that through the upcoming new edition of their index. Uh, we also would like to emphasize the uh, need for making sure that organizations of persons with disabilities and persons with disabilities on the individual level are uh, involved in uh, decision making on digital accessibility as we do in other countries as well. So uh, we are very much looking forward to continuing our collaboration together and also helping Bangladesh to uh, more, even more better, more progress, uh, achieve more progress on the level of promoting digital inclusion of persons with disabilities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Dr. Humayin. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chaudhry. Thank you, Bashkar. This has been a very interesting discussions about our, about digital inclusion, and we invite you to submit your questions or further clarification regarding the Smart Cities for a program to the uh, email that is in the chat, info at smartcitiesforall.org. So please feel free to share with us. Thanks, everyone, for your time today. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you. Monica. <laughs> it's a great.